Yes, how's it going today? Uh, I'm going to just press on Luke 16, uh, verse 16. That's where I left off the other day. The law and the prophets were pro proclaimed until John. Since that time, the good news of the kingdom of God is being preached, and everyone is forcing their way into it. It is easier for heaven and earth to disappear than for the least stroke of the pen to drop out of the law. So Jesus didn't come to do away with the law, the Ten Commandments. He came to fulfill it and make it possible by His Holy Spirit to actually obey the Ten Commandments and live by them. Anyone who divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery. So divorce is sin. Unless Jesus, Jesus makes the point, uh, unless she's or he is committing adultery. That's the only grounds for divorce. Otherwise, you are sinning against heaven. And the man who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. Are you dressed in fine clothes? Are you living in luxury every day? At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores, and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died, and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried in Hades, where he was in torment. This is the rich man. He's dead, and he's in Hades in torment. He looked up and saw Abraham far away. Lazarus by his side. So he called him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I'm in agony in this fire. So hell is fire. There's no water. This guy is thirsty. This rich man who had his good things on this earth but did not offer this poor man at his doorstep even a scrap of food is now in agony. Will that be you? But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, while Lazarus received bad things, but now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between us and you a great chasm has been set in place, so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. So it's permanent. When you die, you're either in heaven or you're hell, and there's no going between. It's eternal. So choose this day who you will serve. It's either yourself or it's the Lord. He answered, Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my family, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them, so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. That's the key. You have to repent and turn from your selfish ways and your sin. And take care of those in need. Preach the gospel. Love your neighbor as yourself. Give to the poor. He said to them, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. So signs aren't enough, I mean, and Jesus does uh, give his disciples the ability to heal people of their disease, cast out demons, raise the dead, um, but if somebody doesn't believe the, the prophets, Moses, the law, um, doesn't matter, that miracle is still not going to do much for that person. Jesus said to his disciples, Things that cause people to stumble are bound to come, but woe to anyone through whom they come. It would be better for them to be thrown into the sea with a millstone tied around their neck than to cause one of these little ones to stumble. So if you're causing children to stumble, to sin, to not follow the Lord, it would be better for you to have a millstone tied around your neck.
I don't know many people out there like leading their leading their children on uh, you know teaching them um, the ways of the Lord and uh, teaching them the Word of God. I I certainly wasn't taught the Word of God growing up. So watch yourselves. If your brother or sister sins against you, rebuke them, and if they repent, forgive them. You gotta rebuke people if they're sinning. And then you forgive them. Even if they sin against you seven times in a day and seven times come back to you saying, I repent, you must forgive them. The problem is, most people never come back and ask for forgiveness. I'm just thinking back to in the instances when people hurt me. You know, guys, like, I remember as a kid, like, beating me over the, just out of the blue, just, like, hitting me out over the head with a pool stick. One guy, we were just playing pool, and just all of a sudden, never heard a word from him. I didn't hang out with him again, because he never came and apologized. Uh, girlfriends I've had, uh, they never came back. They never asked for forgiveness for just giving up. Uh, I mean, I could, I could go on. But uh, people just, they don't, they don't have Jesus, so they can't, uh, they can't forgive you. And they're holding a lot of bitterness and, and anger. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. He replied, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. Suppose of one of you as a servant plowing and looking after the sheep. Will he say to the servant when he comes in from the field, Come along now and sit down to eat? Will he rather say, Prepare my supper, get yourself ready, and wait on me while I eat and drink. After that you may eat and drink. Will he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, We are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. So the key is obedience to the Lord. And, um... Knowing you're unworthy. Um, just doing our duty. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. As they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he, would, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. So, ten guys with leprosy, only one came back and thanked Jesus for being cleansed of his leprosy. Um... That's kind of what Jesus was talking about before, too. Uh, about, um, you know, people coming back to you and asking for forgiveness or being thankful. I mean, it, there's not much of that today. There's very little faith. It's sad. It's really sad. Um... And so this guy was a Samaritan too, so the you know, the Jews wanted nothing to do with Samaritans, they were like outcasts. Kind of like the um the good Samaritan story. The Samaritan was the only one that took care of the man that was beaten on the side of the road. The priest and the Levite did nothing. And they were supposed to be men of God. They weren't. They were hypocrites. Which are you, a hypocrite or are you obedient? Do you do you are you a servant of the most high? Which are you? Jesus asked, We're not all ten cleansed. Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. Once, on being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus replied, The coming of the kingdom of God is not something that can be that can be observed. Nor will people say, Here it is or there it is, because the kingdom of God is in your midst. Then he said to his disciples, The time is coming when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man, 
but you will not see it. So I'm not, I'm not entirely sure what that scripture means, but he says, you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man. So that's more than just, that's multiple days. And I, I almost think that refers to the rapture, which precedes the Great Tribulation, like in the days of Noah. Some of the saints are removed from the devastation and, and God's coming wrath and judgment. Um, and then the other day of the Lord would be his second coming, you know, Armageddon, when he defeats all the armies of, um, all the people that rise up against him and, you know, the Antichrist and Satan, when he comes back with his holy ones and beats the crap out of them, um, just with the word of his mouth, sword of his mouth. Um... And there might even be another coming middle, the middle of the tribulation. I'm not entirely sure. Revelation 12 talks about some of the saints almost being taken up to heaven again. So I don't know if that's the Jewish people midway through the tribulation or it's some other followers of Jesus. But I know many that live during the tribulation and give their lives to follow God are going to be beheaded, the scripture says. They'll be martyred like in the early days of the church. Um, people will tell you, there he is, or here he is. Do not go running off after them. For the Son of Man in his day will be like the lightning, which flashes and lights up the sky from one end to the other. So in the rapture, you know, it's going to be all across the earth, like the lightning from, you know, everywhere. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. Just as it was in the days of Noah, so also will it be in the days of the Son of Man. People were eating, drinking, marrying, and being given in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. Everything was no normal when Noah entered the ark, and he was warning the world. God's judgment was coming. This great flood was coming upon the earth. They didn't listen. And that's what God has some of his, his servants doing today. Is telling the world to repent. So many are walking in wickedness. Um, so everything's normal, and all of a sudden, Noah and his family were removed. The rest were here for God's judgment. So that's, Jesus says, that will be the way, coming of the Son of Man. That's the rapture right there. Dead in Christ will rise first, and those who are alive and remain will be caught up. Then the flood came and destroyed them all. It was the same in the days of Lot. People were eating and drinking, buying and selling, planting and building. The day Lot left Sodom, fire and sulfur rained down from heaven and destroyed them all. So are you going to be like Lot and Noah, escaping God's wrath, or will you be here for his wrath? Are you walking like his son Jesus now, or not? It will be just like this on the day the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, no one who is in the housetop with possessions inside should go down to get them. Likewise, no one in the field should go back for anything. Remember Lot's wife. She looked back at the world. She turned the pillar of salt. So if you, if you go back and try to get your possessions, if your house is more important than the Lord, if your children are more important than the Lord, um, not anything, any of your idols, if you turn back to those idols, you're not going to make it out. Whoever tries to keep their life will lose it. So if you're building up a kingdom here to save your life, you will lose it. And whoever loses their life will preserve it. you got to lose your life for Jesus, and he will give you everlasting life. I tell you, on that night, two people will be in one bed. One will be taken, the other left. On that night, it will be night, um, about half the world. It will be day and the other half. So, one will be taken, the other will be left behind. That's the rapture. Two women, two women will be grinding grain together. One will be taken, and the other left. Again, the rapture. Where, Lord, they asked. He replied, where there is a dead body, there the vultures will gather. Grace of the Lord Jesus be with you.